Welcome everybody to First Minister's Questions Review Show. This week we have Alex Grant, Norrie Stewart and myself Stuart Lockhead and uh, we have a proxy for Mr uh, Phil Attridge who's uh, sunning himself in Andalusia I think. And apparently he was able to watch First Minister's Questions there which, which you can do easily in London but I suppose you can if you've got Sky. <laughs> Our democracy now, our democracy life, whatever. Well, welcome anyway. This week, um, there were rather, some rather serious, sombre moments. Um, Dead Baby's Ashes came back, was up, on the, was raised again on the anniversary of the Piper Alpha disaster when over 169 men died at, uh, on a rig in the North Sea. Nori, would you like to start today's review? Uh, well, I got it right. I predicted pensions. It seems to be what they're going with. Mm -hmm. um, point I made after question time is Alex Salmon seems to have so many retorts now that he doesn't use half of them. And I find myself going, oh, he should have used that one, not that one. Mm -hmm. um, but he's gone with the line, the John Swinney line, which is we spend less of our GDP on welfare than the UK, therefore we can afford the pensions made bother. That's the line. What uh, Joanna Mont's wanting obviously is, well, we're going to have thruppence here and 22 quid there and we'll get the money from selling apples on a Monday morning to pay out on a Thursday, which no politician ever does. You know, I mean, how can you possibly tell her where the money's coming from? Because it's coming from everywhere. Mm -hmm. No, it's, we'll get general you from taxation, taxation Joanne. Yes, general taxation. So she informed him that having done her O-level maths, that to get to the answer you have to read the question, show the working and give the answer. And some wag on the SNP side pointed out it was a page he didn't get a higher maths. <laughs> um, wasn't he impressed with her? This week, I, she got angry. She looked. She did look passionate, but she doesn't look concerned. Passionate. She looks like she's pissed off because Simon's getting the better of her personally. That was the other thing. She got personal with Simon about his pensions. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty low. It's. I mean, they seem quite happy to go below the belt. Um, and they better watch themselves because I'll bet you a pound a pinch of shite that there's more Labour MSPs got skeletons in their cupboards. The other thing, the thing that Ruth Davidson brought up about the ashes that I thought was quite interesting, these would be Labour councils that were in charge of that particular fiasco. Now if the Labour Party, and I'm not sure that they are, supporting a public inquiry, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot with it. She seemed to suggest they were. I mean, Alex Salmon is saying, we have two inquiries ongoing. Four? The, no, he's talking about them, into the ashes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Children's yeah. ashes. Yeah, the, the baby's ashes yeah, yeah. situation. And um, one of them is designed to get a quick recommendation so they can uh, legislate quickly. Uh, and the other is going to look into the personal side for the parents in Edinburgh and that um, other authorities could uh, instigate their own um, inquiries and for the personal. What, I've, what I find it interesting about it is that well, that's the second, third week. It's the third week she's gone on it. So she's not confident going anywhere else. It's, it's okay, it's a real shame for the people who's... He wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't Simon. Oh, he's, he was so measured and diplomatic. Well, it's been like very but look, look at look at what she's not asking. And he mentioned his own she's his own mother. She's totally still, still totally a, given up on politics. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that because you know fine, as soon as she brings up anything with a policy <laughs> he just attacks well, her because of what they're doing but in London. Is, is it a result? I mean has have her detractors in the Tory party turned around and said you're gonna have to shut up about anything that really matters. Well, more or less. You can see you that. she gets kind of um, there's a sketch writer in, in one of the Scottish papers the last two or three weeks writes about First Minister's question. It's a little bit hysterical, but he, she did well because basically she didn't say anything controversial. 
But at the end. But what about Salmon seeing himself? That he, his own mother had a still, still birth. Still birth. Well, I mean, as you know, my wife deals with prem babies, and uh, it's interesting that you thought it was an NHS. Well, I, I just thought it was another. Well, it, no. you're right. I made a mistake when I made that comment. Uh, it isn't NHS, but it's health. Health is a is a, a soft target, as we all know. Anything to do with health, um, it, you know, it's is. But know. Alex, not even the Labour Party are putting that spin on it. Well, well they, I don't they, know. They, 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 they had a there was a demo. A deputation of these parents went to Hollywood yesterday. Mm -hmm. And all the other parties sent representatives, representatives out to, or, or to speak to the parents or representatives, but the SNP sent nobody. Oh, that's not very smart. I didn't know that. You sure? That was in the, in the Herald. I read this morning. All right. I didn't know that. There's no spin given by um, nobody in the chamber. Nobody to mention capitalise on it if that's well, right. I, well, Labour Party, I don't think, can afford to because most of this will have happened uh, in the great days of Labour's control of councils and it's council responsibility. But it, but Difficult one for yeah. them to come out. That's interesting. Go back to, if I, if I can just make a comment, I'll go back to, I think you make a very good point. Um, it be interesting to see if it's consistently forward. If I was the Tory party in Scotland, to, to, let, let's face it, they've got no traction. Um, they're, not, they're never going to win an election, not this side of independence anyway. Um, so, uh, and as Phil points out every week, how can she say that? He's going to smack her in the bush with a white kipper, which is exactly what he does, because as you said, <laughs> the minute whatever subjects he brings up, he can. He doesn't even have to answer it. He just said, you, you, you pull my leg. You are, you want to ask me why I'm not spe effectively spending more on this when you're actually cutting get get out get out. Mm -hmm. So I think, interestingly enough, I think the coalition have decided to pick uh, less high profile subjects and leave the Labour Party to try and have a go. And when the Labour Party have a go, and Salmon, if he if he he did it reasonably well today, I, I agree with you. I think he could probably he should have a list of exercises in front of him that you can use in any of these circumstances. Um, but the, let the Labour Party have a go, and then he turns on the Labour Party and questions their credibility. And the coalition sit there and say, well, that'll do us, because they really don't. I mean, yes, they want to win the referendum, but, but absent that, they couldn't give a monkeys about Holyrood. So if the Labour Party does things that embarrasses the Labour Party and allows Alex Salmon to attack Gordon Brown, Tony Blair, or anybody else, and point to the fact that they're just doing the same as what the coalition are doing, then they're relatively happy with that because they ain't going to win anything in Scotland, the, the, the Tories and the Liberal Party. So they're, they're not bored about winning. The, the only objective they have in mind is to make Labour look as bad as possible and, of course, to win the referendum. So I think there is a, a, yeah. there is a strategy so, there, I think. No, but the background to today's um, FNQ is which. Um, we didn't discuss before watching it, but uh, they all went off early, apparently. They've all, Hollywood shut down early today because most of the politicians have gone to Aberdeen to campaign for right. the by-election. Right, that would be interesting. There was that background. There was also the background of the fact that half the voters still want to vote it. And the, 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 they were obviously trying to make, it was a campaign, by-election campaign was, it was sub, uh, subliminally being discussed in the chamber. Well, arguably, although as we've discussed that, no, it was Stuart, to be quite frank, who watches First Minister's questions? I, you know, I, 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 to be quite honest, I can't imagine First Minister's questions having any eff effect today on voters in Aberdeen. I'm sure some of them are watching it, but is it going to be significant? I doubt it. You're right, the number, it, it, but it's, it's really just the troops. The, you know, it's, there, it's the political troops on, still going around the door, yeah, yeah, sure. picking up the pensioners in their cars right. and their motivation, and that's really... From our man in Spain. Uh, Jola should take up bingo as our eyes are always doom. Not impressed with gloom and doom. Prefer confidence in one's country as delivered by salmon. Not impressed are Phil then. No. I wasn't you... awfully conscious of a looking down a lot. Maybe I'm just getting used no, to it. I actually he's, thought he's she looked there a bit less today because she was a bit more off script than normal. But I, she did it. At one point she, she did eventually get angry. Yeah. But she rarely does. And she's not good, good when she gets angry. 
Well, another slight issue was that um, there's well, usually some foreign dignitaries in the galleries. Bolivia. And uh, this this week it was a, a deputation from Bolivia, and when they were introduced, they all stood up and put their <laughs> rep, hands up. Hands up. Some very left-wing uh, representatives put their fists up in the air, and and it was shown. That's very rarely shown by the BBC, but the BBC showed it as well. Uh, it was interesting aside. They knew it was coming. They wouldn't have shown it. What about Ur Willy? He kind of walked into a trap there. Well, he claimed it wasn't a trap, of course, but, you know, again, it was a relatively, look, it's fine as some if there's a slag heap next to your house, you're going to be pissed off about it. It's so a constituency it. issue for him. It, it is a constituency West issue. Right. Yeah. But, I, I mean, what I don't understand is, are the researchers incompetent? He didn't have to mention bonds. I mean, he got up, he said, right, the coal mines have dug big holes and left slag heaps everywhere. And they and should have and they've they've had an insurance bond. They've gone down the tubes. Mm -hmm. Where's the insurance bond? And it's terrible and, you know, mm -hmm. my constituents are suffering, blah, blah, blah. Salmon gets up and all he says is, yeah, well, we've got to protect open cast mining jobs, but you're right. And if we had the power to enforce bonds, We'd but do. that's devolved, yeah. we would. Yeah. I totally it's agree not, with you, Willie. It's, it's outrageous. <laughs> so help us get the levers to ensure it doesn't happen again. And what's the story, Prestwick story, by the way? I missed. I seem to have missed that. This was years. the plane that landed. Somebody left a note in the toilet saying they were going to set fire to the plane. I think it was. So it was a transatlantic flight from London. So, so they that. landed it at Prestwick. Because they do fly over Scotland yeah. before they set off across the Atlantic. Yeah. yeah, so that's what that was about. It's just a way of saying. But they said that a hundred officers surrounded the plane. Oh, oh. it'd be. I mean, Prestwick's ideal for it because it's in Scotland and it's oh, yeah. nowhere near London. They get them all. They get them all out of Glasgow or whatever. And they, they would have pulled them from all sorts of places. I think they must have had quite a lot of warning that, to, well, to ship them in. But that ties in with the exercise they did on the nuclear waste. Two mm. weeks ago, oh, right, yeah. they simulated a uh, uh, car smash involving nuclear waste and a leak, and it took them five hours to get the specialists up from Portsmouth or wherever they were to just go waste to deal with it. Not the not not the not the, the warheads that go down the M6 well, every they, month. That's what it's to cover. Have you seen? Sorry, it is the have warheads. you seen them? I've mean, passed them yeah. quite, quite frequently. Yeah. They're, they're army colour special trucks and they're going turned on down the M6 with the warheads heading for Aldermaston, right. regular clockwork but not only, maintenance. Not only did it take them five hours to get the experts who were supposed to lead the exercise in place, the ambulance crews who were there went, no nah, we're not touching that. That guy's contaminated, we don't have what Deep, we need to deal with. Yeah, it. Oh, come problem. on lads, it's just an exercise. No, 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 no. We're not touching that. So it ended up, they, they had two dead bodies for the exercise and they ended up losing another two or something but because it, the ambulance guys didn't got, got yeah, No, but as usual, that didn't get a lot of coverage, no. I didn't, I, I saw a very brief reference to it, but you would have thought that was a good, a, a good piece for a headline that said, it's painfully obvious that the, the setup doesn't protect Scotland properly because they can't get the people here fast enough. You know? Well, there is supposed to be a team based on the client. But they must have been on holiday then. Yeah, probably. Anyway, I have to think that Alec really did completely demolish Jula today. Um, her, his main points were he repeated the, the, this percentage of GDP that welfare is actually cheaper to fund in Scotland than it is for the UK as a whole. But he also got in at least two, if not three, digs about Gordon Brown raiding the pen, pensions, yeah. causing the, the, the problems in the first, first place. Yeah, that's true. And, um, <laughs> Why does Joanna Lamont think that private pensions are anything to do with the Scottish Government? The 170 million pension hole in private pensions, does she expect Simon to go to his bank and cover it? It's a scaremongering, uh, it? well, in particular it was for the, the today's election. <clears throat> well, be, be a bit careful because uh, uh, my pension is now paid from the, the PPF, which is the Government Rescue Scheme, because my, my company got taken. What's iniquitous about UK pension law is my, the guy who owned my company flogged the company to Lufthansa, walked away with 300 million quid, 
a no liability for the pension, the deficit in the pension fund, as there is in the vast majority of private pension funds. Lufthansa took took the company over with a contract, and in UK law, I presume English law actually, but English law, which allowed them to <laughs> technically not have any responsibility for the deficit, flogged the company to British Airways, who wrote into the buying to the purchase contract, "We will not accept the pension fund. You got to keep that." So Lufthansa offered to put some money into the pension fund, and the pension regulator rejected it. So it went into the Pension Protection Fund, which is a UK mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. So interestingly, there is a UK dimension. Now, the answer to all of this stuff is, it's quite, it's quite a hard to answer, but it, but it is the answer that Alex Hammond's given. Look, there are a whole host of economic problems. Can we afford to deal with them? Well, Scotland can afford to deal with them better than the UK can because of the very point you made about the deficit relative to to GDP and and this this does need to be made it's quite hard to make this point but Scotland with all its resources including oil would have a better a better banker to deal with all of these issues and would be dealt with accordingly by the financial markets when if and when that happened but it's actually quite hard to tell that story. So all it's Joe, all, yeah, it yeah. is because all Joe and Lamont has to say is a few of the everything. It's absolutely because that's what every institution is saying. You know, well, what are you going to do about this? Well, why would taking five million away from sixty million uh, be a problem when the basic economic scenario is as he described it? Fine, you'd have to, you'd have to enact certain things, you have to take certain bits away from the British state that are currently jointly owned, and you would continue with the health service, with pensions, with everything, you know, but, um, but it's easy to scare monger. Mm. Back, to I, the, back to the inquiries, um, when you mentioned, Simon said there were four current inquiries going on, and I'm not, I'm not quite sure whether it's very, down, down very. That isn't one of them. I said that wasn't one, one of them. But he, he made it, he referenced a particular Company of lawyers, Thompsons. Aye, who are trying to start four want, more. Who want four more inquiries? And of course, it, it, because it's in their interest to get the loads of money. Huge yeah. fees for them. Yeah. It's, it's actually a very tricky thing to respond to because effectively what he was saying was we don't want a protracted, expensive uh, public inquiry unless it's, it's necessary. absolutely necessary. And I don't believe it's necessary, and I'll say it to you in a very statement like fashion. And that's what he did. Yeah, and I think in that, in that, in and to be quite frank, Ruth Davidson <laughs> had a wee dig at him, but she couldn't have very much of a dig at him, so she had to sort of accept that. But it'll come back, because whenever those two reports come in from, from his lordship and Angelini, then the question will be asked, well, is it, have they got fixed to make sure it doesn't happen again, which has got to be the most important thing. And for the parents who want to know what happened to the Wayne's Ashes, you know, is there enough information? There oh. probably isn't, to be quite frank. It'll never be no, at the end of the day, it's going to be very And we also had a, a first appearance by the new um, replacement, the new SNP, MSP for North East Scotland, yeah. Christian Hollande, Hollande, who's a French national, mm -hmm. uh, which he was, a, they were able to demonstrate their international credentials again, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, by right, letting him make his... Yeah. Uh, his a foreigner. A foreigner. Another foreigner. Another foreigner. <laughs> and uh, representing the SNP. So that was an interesting little bit. And uh, Graham Pearson, uh, the, who was a former policeman, a former senior policeman, but a Labour MSP, he came up with, um, there is a bit of a fuss going on because there's three senior executives from the, the board that's meant to, I think it's the police trust that's meant to. That's yeah, it's, uh, a, it's the Scottish Police the Authority. Police service accountable. Yeah, but there Three is a, recent resignations. There is, a, there is no doubt uh, the, the establishment of a single police force and everything that goes with it is replete with areas and opportunities for attack. And, you know, was, funnily enough, I was at a meeting last week where a guy made the following comment. There's only three things you need to cover in a business. Um, governance, finance and strategy. It's an interesting observation, you can debate that as much as you like, but I say it's a fairly sound observation. But your man stood up and said, the bloke in charge of governance, finance and strategy, the three, the three of them have resigned. Now, I have to say, to be absolutely honest, you've got to be a bit worried about what's going on in there. Now, it, it might just be the normal churn that happens when you actually pull a whole load of stuff like that together. You're bound to piss people off. Mm -hmm. uh, and is it going to be all right on the night? And I don't think any of us know. Anyway, Simon was able to 
come up with the good news about the crime figures. Well, they've gone from 30 years lowest right. ever to 39 years lowest I know, but that's ever. Right. to be quite frank, that's got nothing to do with it. Absolutely. It's it's totally give Sam a chance it to say that. It was an, he, got, he, got, he allowed him to emphasise something. What, that's something that the opposition parties are missing. This is an international trend. I it was on TV last night. I, funny enough, there was a program. There was, pro, there was an no, article about it. Down. I right across Europe, in most countries. It's an so, international trend. But it's quite hard to attack. No, no. If you turn around and say, "It's all right, you boasting about that," but it's happening everywhere. It's nothing to do with you. Yeah. That's actually it, it's a possible attack, and yeah. it made worse attack. Let's move on to the scores, yeah. gentlemen, because all right, can I just get a couple more comments from our seen, seen as our Uncle foreign took the trouble contributor? Um, Phil feels that Salmon dealt with all. Honestly, uh, competently, and again confidently, that is a particular comment uh, regarding the Ashes fiasco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once again, very impressed with Willie Rennie. <laughs> we, we Willie, not another inquiry. A bad word. Enforcement is the way forward if possible. Willie is waving a red herring. It's being dealt with. Slapping with a herring. So, not impressed with Willie. I'll give you his breakdown. Um, Salmon not as good as last week. He, he was on good form, but not as good. Uh, Jayla, Jayla. Jula. Jula. Good, but when he delivered, no content. The other two, no change there then. Salmon Day, Lamont five, Davidson three, Willie two. And a slap for Willie. Elaine Smith did quite well considering the chamber seemed at times a little raucous, yeah. Yeah, but they didn't go like She did, she did, she she did quite, quite well. well. She gave him yeah. a bit of a year eight, but I still think they could so, sort them out a bit better. Um, I need to write them down. You write them down. I'm looking at, say, I thought Salmon was majestic. That's the word I was looking for. Absolutely majestic today. I mean, this when he. <laughs> don't tell you, don't give you newness that adjective, please. His Majesty. Aye, I can see it. Eh? But I take your point. Yes, I thought he was absolutely on form. He was measured, especially when it was on the ashes. Oh no, I, I couldn't see it. I couldn't fault him at all. So I'm going to give him a, a nine. And uh, Jula, she, I watched her get angry, and she's no good when she gets angry. Uh, she got caught out talking about O level maths. She didn't even pass her higher maths, apparently. It'd be interesting to see how long it takes for them to discover that she got a C in her O level. Um, <laughs> so she did very poorly. I thought she's not even deserving of a five, so I'm going to give her a four. Um, let's see. Willie, I think it was a constituency question, but he fell into this trap. He got slapped down because of the Someone said, well, it is a bonds issue, an independent insured bonds issue, so if a company goes bankrupt, they're still... And the legislation is... But the, the legislation lies in Westminster, Westminster, so they can't enforce anything. And uh, Ruth, well, as we said before, Can she's staying... Can for Willie? Oh, Willie! Oh, I'll give him one. Ruth is kind of staying out of trouble, uh, again, by focusing on this ashes and asking for an inquiry. And so you've got to say, well, as long as she stays away from policy, then oh, she's in safer ground. Three. Presiding officer, uh, five, because she wasn't there. <laughs> Alex? Um, well, I, I agree with Phil. I don't think uh, Alex was as, as as good as last week. I gave him ten last week. That was the best I'd seen for a long time. So I give him nine. I, th I, th I don't disagree with anything you say, Stuart, but I, if I had to compare him to last week, I thought he was, he was marginally less remarkable, let's put it that way, but not a lot. Um, Lamont, um, uh, well, yeah, uh, she was attacking on the, the right subject. Uh, he did refute it up to a point. I agree with some of his comments earlier. I think he actually could have stuck the boot in even harder, to be quite frank, because, I, you know, the Labour Party lecturing us on welfare is just stunning. Um, so, but. And I thought when she got angry about it, you might think it's funny, it's actually quite a good way to get angry because there's no point, if this is a serious subject and you're laughing at it, SNP. But anyway, I, I'd give her five. They were, um, laughing at, they were laughing at her performance. Uh, they might have, yeah, but she used the opportunity to say you might think the subject's funny. It's not funny for the folk who, who worry about their pensions. That's all I'm saying. It was quite a cute it was, device. That was rehearsed. 
Well, most of what she does is rehearsed, in my opinion. Anyway, I, I'll give her five, as uh, what's her name used to say. I'll, I'll give her five. Um, uh, Ruth Davidson, I give her five as well. As somebody that wasn't that wasn't very exciting, as we've discussed. Um, I think she's avoiding exciting, but by definition, she's not getting into any trouble. It's a serious subject. I'm sure any viewer watching it would say, "Well, she's representing bereaved families, mumble grunts." So I give her a five as well. Uh, well, Willie Rennie, I'm never quite as cruel as Phil. Um, I do think he he basically stands at the back of the goal and asks Alex Salmon to kick the ball straight at him um, uh, almost every week. So I don't. It was a, a constituency question, but. To bring up this whole thing about bonds, which was out with the control of the Scottish Parliament, was just nonsense. But I'll give him two anyway. The preliminary offer, also I'll give him five, because uh, I, th I think they tried quite hard to to stop some of the noise by specifically addressing certain people. Yeah. But I, st I I've yet to hear a presiding officer give any more than five to because I don't think they're tough enough, and they certainly they don't compare to your man in in uh, Berko and his merry men down the road because they're far better at straight than the That's true people are. Sam and well, she um, wasn't that impressive this week. Performed a lot better last week. Um, it, I'm be beginning to think he's got a surfeit of of exercise. Yeah, and I think one of his problems is picking which one to throw. So I'm, I'm going to give him an eight this week. Joanne Lamont, she, she drones on too long. I just feel she should be more incisive. And I think the reason she's in her comfort zone now is because she's acting like a teacher. I think every repost she's come out with, I heard from a teacher yeah. at some point in secondary school. Uh, yeah, she does her style. She's well. an old teacher. Doesn't, teacher. doesn't make her look like a leader, makes her look like a crabby teacher. Yeah. You're the teacher you didn't really like. Well, so, Con Alan Cochran, she's a fine debater. Did you not see him saying uh, that on the, uh, well, on, well, the, on the Rory Bremner show? John Lamont is a fine debater. She really holds Alex Salmon well, to she maybe what? is in the Labour Party amongst Labour Party people. Well, I don't think he sees that. Him. He's talking about her on TV and well, she's a train wreck most of the time. Who would believe Alan Cochran saying anything? Oh, very few, but... Uh, Cocker. Ruth Davidson. I'm giving Ruth zero because I'm sorry. Okay, it's an important issue to a, a very, 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 very small minority of people. She is the figurehead of the Conservative Party in Scotland. If she can't find something with more gravitas yeah, yeah. and politics, and she shouldn't be there. She's, she's pretty safe. When, well, the, yeah. She's the opposition. The government plays safe. The opposition should be ripping lumps out of them. Mm. That's their job. Uh, so she's not doing her job. Well, we do see typically Murdo Fraser, actually, if he gets a supplementary, no. asking better questions than her. So Can I just point out yeah. that nobody took, took advantage of the fact that Ruth Davidson was refused a drink. She wasn't allowed to buy a drink. That's a compliment, though. At uh, the Bruce Springsteen gig in Glasgow yeah. this week. No. Yes, they asked for ID. She didn't have any ID to prove her age. And she's 32, is it? Yeah, but that's a compliment. Any woman's going to think that's wonderful. Well, oh, it depends. If you're the leader of a political party, it's a little embarrassing if you if you look so immature yeah, and can't buy a drink. You know who? Aye, that's a different story. But nobody mentioned it, even sideways. I thought somebody might have a sideways thing. Willie, Willie Rennie has taken the same path. Aye. He's, he's gone for a constituency the question. The tradition. Well, I'm sorry, he's leader, leader of the Liberal Party, okay, they can barely fill a big taxi, but it should be about policy. It, sh it, I should, mean, yeah. it should be something. You know, important. you've got a million backbenchers to ask these constituency questions, and when leaders of opposition parties go down that road, they're failing. They're, Simon's given them too many kickings. They're scared to go after the important stuff. They've no ground. So he's getting zero as well. But they ought, they ought to be they ought to be echoing more on Alexander. Mm. Uh, they get plenty of sound bites when they well, don't have to I stand mean, up again. But he ought to be doing that if he's doing his job. I feel quite sorry for him because he's twice been caught out with the subject he's picked. Yeah. For Holyrood by Clegg, then supporting what Alexander's said, argument yeah, is. Yeah. So I mean that's difficult. But I'm sorry. He needs the balls to get up and do something about it. 
And to be honest with you, Scotland's the only platform they've got. Yeah. Because they're in coalition then in Westminster. Yeah. So that's how they should be using it. We're presiding over them? Uh, mm, I'm going to give her a five. I think one of the problems is Burko's got a personality. <laughs> and he hates everybody, including the Tories. So he's always got a smart comment, which makes him quite entertaining. Mm. Is he any more effective? I'm not sure. You just hear more of him. Yeah. Um, so how are we looking at the scores? Right, what have we got? 16. 34 for Salmond. 18 for Lamont. 11 for Davidson, which is high, I think. Five for Woolley. Mind you, he doesn't get as much practice. No. And 21 for the presiding officer. So Salmon with nearly double everybody else. Can't, can't complain. Well, strangely enough, if you add up Lamont Davidson and Rennie, they come to 34. So it's quite evenly balanced. <laughs> I am total. Once again, it's been well, a pleasure. Well, a, wee, for you. a wee thank you to our Foreign Spanish correspondent. correspondent for taking the trouble to lie in the sun with a drink, <laughs> watch Question Time, and tweet us his opinion. Thank you very much to Mr. Attridge, uh, lying in the Spanish sun. And thank you very much to Dory Stewart, Alex Grant, and for myself, Stuart Walker. Okay. Goodbye. And